pirating anime. A debate as old as time. Anime fans have fought this war for decades. Twitter threads and forums have become complete bloody battlefields. Friendships broken, money lost, and enemies made. Pirate stands on one side and streaming fans on the other. Crunchyroll or Kiss Anime. Manga Rock or the Shonen Jump app. Funimation or literally anything else. Which side is right? Which side is wrong? Many YouTubers like myself have shared their opinions breaking down why you should and should not pirate anime. But today, through countless hours of research, I, RJ Lane, aim to find the truth. To weigh the pros and cons and come to a definitive answer. It is time to find out the answer to one of the anime community's most debated topics. Pirating anime. Good or bad? Let's fucking do this. To begin, first we must define what it means to pirate anime. For those who are not familiar with the term, no, you are not actually a pirate. Sorry to crush your dreams, but basically pirating anime refers to the act of watching anime on an illegal site for free. Now, I'm not going to say any names of the specific sites because that's not my place to call people out, and the ones I did already name have already been shut down. But on these sites, you can basically watch every anime under the sun free of charge, no matter what country you're in. If you can get through the sea of pop-up ads that appear every single time you move your mouse. I just want to watch Naruto! Now, you may be wondering, if that's the case, then why is this a debate? Well, like most things, it boils down to money. If there are several sites on the internet where you could watch anime for free, then why would you pay for anime? But on the other hand, if you don't support the industry, then how do you expect to get more anime? But what does supporting the industry really mean? What is the best way to support our favorite creators? Where is our money actually going? Do you see the problem? This is not as black and white as it may seem, but we have to start somewhere. The obvious reason why fans pirate is so they can enjoy their favorite shows without spending a dime. The clear argument for this case is that not everyone has the money to afford streaming services like Netflix, Crunchyroll, and Funimation. And with Crunchyroll increasing its prices not too long ago, this is becoming an even bigger issue to fans that have low income or no income at all. So are you going to say that they shouldn't watch anime? Well, some people actually do, and whoa, there are just some bad takes out there, like this one on the screen. Come on, lady. Really? But I don't think that's fair to them. You're not going to tell a Japanese person they can't watch Spongebob because they can't afford a Paramount Plus subscription, so why would you do the same thing for anime? Which brings me to the next reason people pirate. Anime is a medium that is made mostly in Japan, but enjoyed around the world. So for the longest time, it was really difficult to watch anime if you didn't live in Japan, which brought in the rise of pirate sites because that was the only way. You could say pirate sites were on the rise. <laughs> Get it? That's the name of our channel. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. And although Funimation and Crunchyroll have made anime more accessible in the recent years, they don't reach everyone. Yes, anime isn't available to everyone in every single country. If you have a Crunchyroll account, you still may not be able to watch certain shows depending on where you live. For example, according to an article by ComicBook.com written in August of 2020, when Kiss Anime was shut down, Anime News Network took a deep dive into the anime fandom to see the impact. With over 60% of anime fans from India, Malaysia, and other Southeast Asian countries saying they were not happy and harshly impacted by the shutdown. 33.89% of United States anime fans said the same thing. Why was it a bigger problem in Southeast Asia? Because of availability. The article later reveals that in India, Crunchyroll offers 120 shows. Now, this may seem like a lot to you, but it's actually quite small compared to the thousands of shows the United States Crunchyroll Library offers. Pirate sites don't have this problem. The internet is open to anyone with access, and I can only imagine how hard it is for those who live in areas where they can't access anime and they don't have the money to pay for streaming services. For some, pirating anime is the only way to watch anime. 
On the other side of that, you do have companies trying their best to make anime worldwide. How do you expect Crunchyroll to expand if they don't have the money? On top of that, you don't have to worry about hentai pop-up ads blowing up your computer. I just want to watch Naruto. You could get ad blocker, but that's a whole process in itself that most people don't feel like going through. Watching anime legally is convenient, and it's that convenience that gets fans to pay for it. Shut up and take my money! On top of that, you are showing studios what is and isn't popular. Anime studios have more contact with official companies like Funimation and Crunchyroll than they do pirate sites. In fact, they probably have no contact with pirate sites. That would just be weird. But if official companies are trying to license certain animes, then studios know that people around the world are willing to pay for this show. Thus, they will continue production. However, it's a lot more complicated than this, and this reasoning leads us to our next topic. Supporting the industry. Where is our money going? Okay, let me break this down for you. I'm no professional, I'm just a guy on YouTube that did research on a topic, but from my understanding, here's how everything works. Companies like Funimation, we'll just stick with them for now, were made because they saw profit in bringing anime to the West. Thus, they pick a show that they think will sell well and pay for the licensing, thus giving money to the people who made the show in Japan so they can in turn sell the show overseas. Now with the show license, they put it up on their streaming platform, advertise the streaming platform to you, and thus you give them money to watch said show. This is all in hopes that they make back more money than what they paid for the show so they can make a profit. And the process continues. So the question I hear nowadays is, is my subscription to these anime streaming platforms supporting the anime industry? The answer is yes and no. Yes, because if more people pay for streaming platforms, then companies like Funimation will start licensing more shows and the anime studios behind them will receive more money, as we have seen in recent years with anime becoming more and more mainstream. And if companies like Funimation aren't making a profit, then they will license fewer shows and the studios will make less money. However, an argument can be made that you are not supporting the anime industry because companies like Funimation have already paid those studios for the shows and the money you are paying them for the streaming platforms is just going in their pockets. But how do you expect studios to make money outside of Japan if Western distributors don't have the money to pay them? On the other hand, are Western distributors paying them a fair amount for the actual quality of the show? And then what about the animators? Their salaries won't increase no matter what you do. But then again, doing nothing doesn't seem right either. You see why this is a complicated mess of an argument? Many people try to retcon this argument by saying you can just buy merch from the anime you want to support. And that's true. From DVDs to figurines and even clothes, every show has merch. But even that has gotten more and more complicated because you have to make sure that the merch is official, otherwise you're giving money to someone who is not the studio. For example, people will draw fan art of their favorite anime, put it on a hoodie, and sell it. And yeah, you being a fan of the show and how they drew that specific character will pay for it, but that money isn't going to the original creators. It's going to the person that's selling the fan art hoodie. Same thing with old DVDs. People can easily sell their old DVDs on the internet and the animation studios will never see a dime. The question now is not if your actions are supporting the industry, it's how much you are supporting the industry. Where are you putting your money and how much is actually going to the creators you're trying to support? Streaming services do pay for the license of the show, but can't shows make back what they lose from streaming from fans buying official merch? It's a complicated mess and that's just business really. It's all about the money. And we've been looking at it from the consumer's perspective, but let's take a minute and talk about the streaming services themselves. Funimation and Crunchyroll two of the biggest Western anime streaming services have been criticized time and time again for not giving a damn about the community they claim to represent. From underpaying their translators to the many issues that their streaming software has and has, all the way to using subscribers' money to make something. Whatever that was. People say these companies are in it for the profit and have no interest in actually improving their services because, well, people are going to buy it anyway. Especially nowadays because the new generation of anime fans don't even know that pirate sites exist. 
I have friends telling me that they have no way of paying for Crunchyroll, so they have no way of watching certain anime. And I was actually surprised that they never heard of Kiss Anime or any other pirate site. Streaming at large has become the number one way to consume any art form. But if that's the case, then there really is no battle to be fought here. If people are going to pay for Funimation regardless of how well the pirate sites are doing, then Funimation has no incentive to put any effort into improving their services. On the other hand, you can't say that these companies haven't improved their services at all. Dub fans are getting English dub episodes way faster than 10 years ago, and the simulcast system allows us to watch anime the same day it releases on Japanese television. However, people still complain about the quality of the videos on streaming platforms, along with a number of technical issues as well. If anyone from Funimation is watching this, the fact that I can't pick up where I left off, or the fact that I have to turn on subtitles for each episode I watch in the English dub, is utter bullshit. Yes, I watch everything with subtitles. Fight me. My point is that they have improved, but there are several issues that make you think they have gone absolutely nowhere, giving both sides of the argument much needed material to keep this war going. Legal sites like Funimation have taken several actions to shut down pirate sites themselves, but at this point, it's not about shutting down the pirate site, but outperforming them. In conclusion, with all the information I have presented to you, and after hours of watching other YouTubers present their arguments and reading several articles to the point where I had to get my sister to come help me, yes, this debate is so vast, it took at least two people to bring us to this one conclusion. I even posted a poll as small as the channel is to see what you guys thought. But if you made it this far into the video, I will keep you waiting no longer. Time to answer the original question. Pirating anime, good or bad? The answer is, drum roll please. I don't know, do you bro? Hey guys, thanks for watching that video. If you liked that, then be sure to hit that sub and bell button to get more. Comment your thoughts below. I'm curious to see what you guys think. Also, unlike the anime industry, it's not that hard to support the creators of this video. For as low as $1 a month, you can support me and the rest of the team on Patreon. So consider donating. Follow us on Twitter and join the On The Rise family. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, my friends, I'm RJ Lane. And this has been On The Rise.